Hello everyone, so it's 3am here, I've just finished up levelling Gauss, two formers, um, I have quite mixed feelings about him just because he takes the place of my favourite frame, I don't mind him, He um, he's a mixed bag for me, I like some of his abilities and some of the, some of the others I don't really like that much. Um, he's pretty cool, he's pretty well rounded as like most frames are that come out these days, I mean Baruch, Garuda, Wukong Prime, or Wukong Rework, um, they all seem to be focused on basically a little bit of everything, so you can just do everything, so there's like not much synergy going on. Um, he looks he looks quite cool, his abilities sound pretty cool, um, but again, I'm not a huge fan, I do prefer Vault over, over Gauss, but Gauss has definitely more going on. Um, to keep him alive, basically. So, I will quickly show you his abilities and talk you through them. And then we'll go on to the build. So, first of all, we have his passive. Moving generates an electrical current that fills Gauss's battery shields. Recharge up to 8% faster, while the recharge delay is up to 8% shorter, based on the battery level. So, basically, you run around and you gain up a meter uh, of overcharge, like a battery that he has. It's sort of his, like, gimmick. Um, you also get some shield recharge and it's pretty good to just keep moving around and you'll, you'll, you'll get it up slowly. Um, Mac Rush bursts into a hyper sprint bowling over enemies and charging it, the battery, charging the battery, crashing into solid objects generates a powerful shockwave hold to rush continuously. This is basically the equivalent of Volts number two, the second ability. Uh, you just fly everywhere, bump into things, cause some bit, cause a bit of damage. And off you go, basically. It's as simple as that. There's not much to it. It also in increases his uh, battery whilst you're doing that. Kinetic plating. Generate armor plating that converts a portion of absorbed kinetic damage, physical heat, cold, and blast into energy. Also protects Gauss from being staggered or knocked down. Damage resistance is relative to the battery level. So, first half of it, you cast it. It gives you some sort of shield. Um, any kind of status effect of those ones listed will convert 5% of that into energy, which is really good because Gauss really needs energy. He's a really good um, energy hungry frame. Um, and then the second half of it gives you damage resistance relative to the battery level, which means when it's higher, you get a higher damage resistance. And when it's lower, you start to that starts to go down and deplete. Um, it's pretty much... Pretty much that, you turn it on and off it goes basically, it's pretty good. Moving on, Thermal Sunder. Siphon kinetic energy from the area, charging the battery and inflicting cold status on nearby enemies. Hold reverses the process, Dr hold holding the key reverses the process, draining the battery and inflicting heat instead, Status on heat status on nearby enemies. So basically, you press it, you, you basically do a uh, frost ultimate. It's not quite as extreme as that, but it's a frost ultimate essentially. And then you, rather than doing that, you hold it, and then you have an ember ultimate, <laughs> kind of, not not in the same extreme, but you basically freeze them, then burn them, and it's pretty good. Um, I actually really like this ability. When you put cold on them, you gain a lot of battery, and when you use your heat, you drain that battery for more damage. It's as simple as that. You just cast it and off it goes. It's quite cheap to cast. It's 20, 20 energy with my build. Um, and the final ability, red line. Push Gauss's battery beyond the beyond the red line, supercharging his abilities and setting fire rate, attack speed, and reload speed. Holds the rate into overdrive. When passed, the red line bolts of arcing electricity dance periodically from Gauss, exploding on mass when the ability is deactivated. So basically, you turn it on, you pump his abilities beyond the red line, and then you start to get huge buffs for your frame. Um, attack speed, reload speed, holster speed, and a bit of area damage. It's quite nice because it's impact and sometimes it can stun. But other than that, it's a bit lackluster in the damage. But then you make up for it by having so much attack speed that you could just fly through everything and destroy everything. Um, that's pretty much what he does. So basically what you do is you run around... You use this, your Mac Rush, to gain some charge. You also use your Thermal Sunder to gain charge. And you use Kinetic Plating to gain a bit of energy and also protection. And your Ultimate, you turn on and just let it 
play itself out and use it to give yourself huge buffs. So his whole kit is around balancing your battery, flying around, trying to keep it up as high as possible to get all the buffs from it. Um, you do that by staying on the move, using abilities quite often. That's why I'm saying he's quite a hungry frame for energy. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what he does. He's quite good at keeping himself alive as long as you have energy, basically. So the first of my builds is all round. So basically, it's for everything. Less so for Thermal Sunder, but it is for everything else. It will keep you alive. So Prime Continuity, just because it gives you very nice longevity on Kinetic Plating and your ultimate. I think it's 58 seconds. Yep, 58 seconds on red line. So you can cast it every minute and just let it let it do its thing. Um, Thermal Sunder also keeps the duration of the the area quite keeps it up for longer but it's not that wide because my and my range is quite low but that's fine it's not too much of an issue because you're going to be using mac rush which only costs six energy per per cast it's it's a pretty it's a that's pretty good it's the same as zephyr basically you're just flying around and you're gaining so much of your battery that it's no problem now reminded more duration um at the cost of range which is mm, it, i think that's you know fairly reasonable for this build intensity intensify for strength just to buff up some of that damage on the things you're doing also the attack speed on your ultimate fleeing expertise for the efficiency to bring down the costs uh, it's pretty simple i liked prime i like prime flow because having a stockpile of energy means that you can rely on it um especially when there's like a um leech eximus or something um stretch just to stop the range from being too extreme and equilibrium which is kind of a weird one um i like it just because if you do end up running out of energy and you're getting hit you can fly around like one last cast for six energy and pick up more energy basically and keep yourself alive so i quite like equilibrium uh the second build that i have is for thermal sunder now this build i really like um it leveled me from zero to 30 very very well five to 30 very very quickly um, just because it's sort of like a low level AOE kind of fire damage CC. It's like a mix of the mixed bag. It's, it's, it's very good. I really like this. I really like this ability. Um, just spamming it, running around, spamming it. It's, it's pretty fun. It's pretty gimmicky, but, um, yeah, so it's the same thing essentially. Um, more duration, range, range, um, prime flow for more energy, vitality. I prefer it over the shields because I feel like the passive is... You can go for it, but I mean, if you get hit with toxin, you're basically dead either way. So, um, duration just to keep up the thermal sunder for longer and strength intensify. You can swap. You can swap this out for blind rage or something. It's it's entirely up to you. But th this is the build that I'm running. Um, I haven't got the Exless mod slot because it's very late, and I would like to get this video done today. Um, but you still do enough damage if if you was to get the thermal uh, if you was to get the excellent slot i would say anything like the energy max or the strength one i don't know which one it's called uh range would be quite good here i don't know cunning drift so any any of them really they're all just little minor buffs um i always run the same arcanes because i only have two that i like <laughs> so i'll get consequence to fly everywhere um i love mobility in this game obviously so yeah let me show you what thermal sunder can do first of all so basically you get a bunch of energy and you cast your you press e five mine's e you press three and then you hold it so one of them is one of them is frost and the other one is fire they don't last very long but the fact is they're so cheap to cast you can just keep running around spamming them and you have this huge dome of just pure hatred it's great I will quickly show you what it does to you. Five charges, level 145. So you can fly on over there with your number one. Burn them, stun them, burn them, stun them. And they were level 150. And that will do that basically to anything except um, ancients. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much what that does. You just literally run around sprinting and you're gaining, you're gaining your charge and you are just burning everything and it's in your in your way it's it's amazing
it's sort of like an, an ember roll mixed with a i don't know it's it i like it because you can just mix and match whether you want cc or fire um i i would say keep alternating just to keep your um battery charge quite high so you can do more damage um and then i will quickly show you what the other one can do so if we go to all around so basically you can just spam around like this and you go absolutely mental you can hold it i just prefer tapping it because i i actually really think that it encourages melee fighting because you can just fl like fly everywhere and just slice everyone up you know i really like this one um connect plane just to turn it on 50 you have a whole minute of this it, you just turn it on let it go and it works completely on its own you don't have to worry about it and then obviously thermal sunder it's not nearly as big but it still does the job. And your ultimate, of course. So if I quickly show what it does. If you put it over the red, you slowly gain a little bar. And when that, when it goes up, um, you get to 100%. And you start to get even faster and faster and faster with your attack speeds and stuff. And it's basically how Vault's W uh, number 2 works. Uh, my binds are completely different, but there you are. So I will quickly show you what it does to these level 145s. Um, there's not much I can show you damage-wise, just because, you know, you, you still do a lot of the damage um, with your weapons, but he still does a lot of damage. So you can slide into them. You don't really do much... Oh, I fell off. Uh, you don't really do much that much damage with um, your Q. It's more like burning them, and you just absolutely destroy them with that. And you know you turn on your ultimate and you turn on kinetic plating it's all about keeping the balance so as you can see it's going down um it's all about keeping the balance keeping it up but obviously having such high efficiency you can keep casting your q keep running around you know you, you you'll never lose it really and then you just recast it so that's pretty much gauss he's pretty simple um there's not much to really show off with him you know you just turn a couple of abilities on and use the other two to keep yourself alive and do, do some damage He's okay. I don't mind him. I still prefer Vault, but there you are. Um, if you have any ideas or any builds that you think are really interesting with him, let me know because I'm. I really want to know. Um, I I like him, but that's all I could find really for uses for him because I feel like there isn't that many. You know, running around and stuff. I just take my Vault or something. You know. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you again soon. See you later.